Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Nuggets of Truth. This is the mystery of the shepherds. We know that God doesn't do random things or arbitrary things. He always has a reason for doing what it is that he does or for saying what he says. So why the seemingly random act of visiting shepherds out in the middle of nowhere? You know, I've often heard shepherds were liars or shepherds were looked down on. Shepherds were poor and of a low estate. They were just poor, humble men, and that is who Jesus came to save. So that is the reason they were visited. Besides, the people could identify with them. There were a few other reasons that I've heard as well that I didn't mention here. But let's just think this through for a moment. Have you ever heard or or have you ever read where an angel of God appeared to a man or a woman who was wicked and unreliable? No, I haven't either. What I have read, though, was angels appeared to devout men, men who was looking for and waiting on the redemption of Israel, godly men who were serving the Lord, like Abraham, Lot, Moses, Daniel, Ezekiel, Mary, Zechariah, Joseph, the apostles, Cornelius, the women who went to the tomb after Jesus rose from the dead, Peter and John and Paul, and the list goes on and on. But the point here is, from the list above, there is not one unworthy man or woman that an angel appeared to. Matter of fact, Jesus wouldn't even talk to King Herod just before his crucifixion. So, I would venture to say that the reason the angel appeared to the shepherds is because they were watching and praying and hoping, and not just because they were unworthy or poor and humble or any of the things that that was listed above. There has to be another reason, and that reason has to do with their job. You see, these men were not just ordinary shepherds. They were highly trained Levitical shepherds who specialized in recognizing and caring for sacrificial lamb. These were the shepherds who were keeping watch over the sacrificial lamb that would be used in temple sacrifice, such as the two daily lambs, one for the morning sacrifice and one for the evening sacrifice. Then there were the special feasts and ceremonies like the new moon sacrifice and the feast of Passover. So these shepherds knew the prophecies, they knew the scriptures, they knew that the feast of Passover was only a shadow of things to come. They knew that one day the promised Messiah would come and redeem Israel. They were watching and waiting. These lambs were without spot or blemish. They were bred just for the occasion. Let us turn now to the scripture and read for ourselves. We're going to go through this verse by verse like a Bible study, starting in verse 1, and we're going to read all the way through to verse 20. Verse 1. Those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. Here Caesar Augustus made a decree that would put Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem, the city of David. If it was not for the governmental census, Mary and Joseph would have no reason to travel to Bethlehem. Verse 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. Scriptures declared that the Messiah, Jesus, would come from the tribe of Judah. See Genesis 49 verse 10. After that, he was proclaimed to be from the lineage of David. See Micah chapter 5 verse 2. Now moving on to verse 6. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Now here is where it begins to get really interesting. And you can see the fulfillment of scripture and the fulfillment of the law. Mary wrapped him. 
he, she, she swaddled baby Jesus in swaddling cloths and she laid him in a manger. I want you to hold on to that verse. We, we're going to revisit that later on in our study. For now, I want you to focus on the word in. There was no room for them in the inn. This word in the Greek is the word katalima, meaning guest room. It is used three times in the New Testament. Two of those times it is translated guest room. Once in Mark 14, verse 14, and the other time in Luke chapter 22, verse 11, when Jesus inquired about the guest room where he will eat the Passover meal with his disciples. Therefore, it would stand to reason that when Luke wrote the word Catalima, he meant guest room and not in. Otherwise, he would have used the word Chion as he did in the parable of the Good Samaritan when he took the injured man to the inn to have his wounds cared for. Verse 8. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. This Greek word, chora, translated region, it can also be translated field. And the word argolero, translated field, does not actually mean field. It simply means to camp out, implying actually living outdoors according to the Dictionary of Biblical Languages and Semitic Domains. So, I want you to keep that in mind as well, as we read verse 9 and 10. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. This is the fulfillment of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and from your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Him who dishonors you, I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God had called Abram a childless man and promised to make him into a great nation. And God was creating a nation for the Messiah to be born into. And here is the promise now. The good news was for all people that Messiah had finally come. And it was not just for some, but for all all the families of the earth shall be blessed, the scripture says. Verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. Here it really gets good. The city of David is Bethlehem. So the field where the shepherds was keeping watch over their flock by night was near or in Bethlehem. Here is the first part of the clue that the angel gave to the shepherds. The angel said, And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. So, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. That is the clue. But did I not just describe every newborn in Bethlehem? But, I want us to dig just a little bit deeper. The word translated a baby is the Greek word brephos, which in antiquity means the child. So it should read the child. Now the swollen cloths, it wasn't just torn up strips of cloth. 
Apparently, when a child was born, salt was pulverized until it was into fine powder. Strips of cloths were cut, measuring around five to six yards long and four to five inches wide. The baby was washed and then rubbed down with the powdered salt and then wrapped in swaddling cloths, as is mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 4. As I said, these shepherds were Levitical priests. They were highly trained in birthing, identifying, and caring for lambs that are acceptable enough to use in temple worship. So why tell the shepherds? They were told because the long-awaited Messiah, whom they were trained to care for and rear his substitutes, had finally come. That is the reason why these shepherds were told. Verse 15. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Let us now answer the question, where did they know where to look? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there were many, many stables in Bethlehem at the time. But what if Jesus was not born in a nasty, stinky stable full of animals and, and drop-ins, as the Christmas tradition indicates? Let us turn to Micah's prophecy about the Messiah. Micah chapter 4, verse 8. And you... O tower of the flock, hill of the daughter of Zion, to you shall it come, the former dominion shall come, kingship from the daughter of Jerusalem. The word that is translated tower of the flock is the word migdal eater, which means migdal, meaning tower, and eater, the flock. So the phrase is used twice in the Old Testament. Once in Genesis chapter 35, verse 21, right after Rachel dies in Bethlehem, right after giving birth to Benjamin, and Jacob moved past Migdal Eder, or the tower of the flock, and pitched his tent. Then Reuben, his firstborn, went up and slept with Bilhah. I'll probably do a video sometime next year on that for the possible reasons why Reuben slept with Bilhah. Now, apparently, Migdal Eder, the tower of the flock, was in Bethlehem, or just outside the city limits of Bethlehem. It was the place where these shepherds, these seem Levitical shepherds, would take their ewes, the female sheep, who were about to give birth, and there they would deliver the sacrificial lambs. They would wrap these little baby lambs as a newborn lamb. They would wrap them in swaddling cloths so that they would not hurt themselves. And they would lay them in, a, in, in the manger until they had stopped thrashing around. These swaddling cloths were to ensure that the newborn lambs would not hurt themselves in any way or that they would not break any bones or cause anything to happen that would disqualify them or make them unacceptable for temple sacrifice. That is why they knew where to go because they were familiar with Migdal Eder. They were familiar with the tower of the flock. You see, Migdal Eder apparently has a two-story building, or, or it was a two-story building, where the shepherds would look out over the lambs that would be used in a temple sacrifice. And right downstairs was where the, the ewes gave birth to their young. The manger was a sterile place. It was clean. It was well kept. It was cared for because this, the, the temple sacrifice was being birthed there and being laid there. So everything had to be clean. It was not a stinky stable with animals all around and animal drop-ins. It was a sterilized, clean environment. But I still love that Christmas carol, Away in a Manger. And the verse says, the cattle are lowing, the poor baby wakes. I still love it. After all, it's tradition. <laughs> so anyway, the manger there was very familiar to these shepherds. 
They didn't have to wonder where to look. They didn't have to go about knocking on doors. They remembered the scripture from Micah chapter 4 verse 8. And you, O tower of the flock, you, Migdal Eater, the hill of the daughter of Zion, to you shall it come. The former dominion shall come. Kingship for the daughter of Jerusalem. All right, so let's read the last four verses. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all of these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And that was Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 20. The shepherds went and saw for themselves everything that the angel had told them. And it was eerily familiar. It was exactly what they did with the sacrificial lambs. They had begun to tell others about this baby Jesus. They began to tell others what the angel had told them. They began to tell others what, what they had seen there. That the baby was wrapped in swaddling clothes. It was lying in a manger. And they, they began to think, could this be the long-awaited Messiah? Could this be the King of Israel? Could this be the very Lamb of God? The one who we had been waiting for for centuries. So the people began to wonder about it. They began to wonder what the shepherds had told them. Is it true? Could this baby really be the prophesied Messiah? No other baby was ever born in Migdal Eder. No other baby was ever laid in the manger. But Mary treasured all of this up in her heart and she pondered it. And I'm sure there was joy, but there was some type of fear and maybe apprehension. So some hint of of, of sorrow because Mary knew the scriptures as well and she knew that her, her son she, or she probably knew that her son was destined to give his life for all humanity for all mankind and so I'm pretty sure those thoughts were mixed with joy that one day her baby boy would grow up and be the sacrifice for all Israel and for the whole world. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it shed some light on why the shepherds were chosen. If you liked this video, please would you hit that like button and would you share this video and our other videos? Subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos such as these. Thank you for joining us. My name is Kenny Yates and this is Hold to Hope and you've been watching Nuggets of Truth. Again, thank you for watching. Be blessed and stay blessed. Merry Christmas.